Hey everyone, it's Robert Holland. In today's video, I want to talk about something that's been around for quite a while now, but I still think it is underused either because people just don't know about its power, don't know how to properly use it, or they're just completely unaware that it exists. And that is the range mask feature in Adobe Lightroom, which is a way to mask out local adjustments. If you don't know, a local adjustment is something that you apply to only part of an image, such as a brush stroke or a graduated filter or a radial filter. All of those qualify as local adjustments, whereas a global adjustment is anything that you do to the entire image, such as modifying the exposure, that's a global adjustment. Now, what I love about the range mask is it allows you to stay in Adobe Lightroom, which is definitely not as powerful of an editor as, say, Photoshop, but if you are someone who is distributing a large volume of images, whether that be in wedding photography or portrait photography or school photography, staying in Lightroom. That way you can quickly navigate between images and sync adjustments between images that are similar is just a way more powerful and way more profitable way to edit images. So let's talk about two of my favorite ways to use the range mask feature. Okay, so we're gonna grab the radial filter in the upper right here. And you can also hit Shift M on your keyboard, but either way it will allow you to draw a circle or oval shape. And then once you have that shape drawn, Anything either inside or outside can be controlled with an adjustment over here on the side. So for instance, if I increase the saturation all the way at plus 100, everything outside of my oval shape that I just created is going to get saturation plus 100. If I instead invert it, now everything inside of my shape will have saturation plus 100. And we'll just leave that on as we get to the next demonstration, because right below that is range mask, which is the feature that I think is so powerful. So if I click right here, a little sub menu will pop up and I can choose between color or luminance. And if you happen to be using some type of camera that actually captures depth data, then you can also use this with a depth mask, but my camera doesn't do that. And between color and luminance, which are available to all of us, I am 95% of the time using color, but you can also use a luminance mask as well if you're trying to create a selection based on values in an image, based on the brightness of an area. So instead, we're gonna focus on color. So I'm gonna grab color, and then this eyedropper tool pops up. And I can use that eyedropper to click a specific color that I want as part of the mask, and everything else will kind of be forgotten about. And if you go down here, you have a new slider that allows you to fine tune your mask. And if you hold the Alt key, when you click on it, you'll see it very clearly in black and white. Anything lighter is being more affected, anything darker is being less affected. So if I wanted more of those skin tones to be part of whatever type of effect I'm applying, then I would increase the amount. And if I wanted less because I'm incorporating too much of my background in the mask or maybe the clothing from the subject, I can start decreasing it. Now, before we get into making that mask perfect, I want to show you the other powerful little aspect of this is actually in this eyedropper tool. And instead of just clicking a single point and going off that color, I want you to try clicking and holding because now anything that is inside of this square is going to count as a color in my mask, which allows me to capture more of the colors of her skin tone while still excluding lots of other colors in the image. So this lets me get all these shadows that are on the backside of her leg. So if I do that and we put our eyedropper away, we go back to our mask. Now look at that. We've got her legs completely white, which means they're going to get any of the effect that we apply. So now I can drop down this amount slider and just exclude more of that background from any effect of the adjustments that I make. I'm gonna go down to right about here. This seems to be about as low as I can go before I start making patches of skin um, be excluded from the mask. Now I didn't do this to put 100% saturation in her skin. I actually did this because I want to drop the texture. That saturation is just way more visible for you guys to follow along. So here I'm gonna drop down the texture a bit and I'm also going to brighten her skin just a little bit. Now, if we go back to this mask, you can see some of this area on the ground, these street lights behind her, and even her hair, that's the part I'm most concerned about, her hair have been included in this mask. So you also have the option now 
Now that you've done the big selection and got all of her skin perfect, you can use a brush to make any quick adjustments after the fact. So I'm going to grab that brush. We're going to go in here. When I hold Alt, I'm using the eraser. And now anything that I erase is going to be excluded from this mask. So I can just go around here on the ground. And even though it wasn't being affected a lot, especially when you get into making color and exposure adjustments, you kind of want to do your best to remove everything that you don't want to be affected just so you don't get any weird spots in your image. So here, I just brushed a little bit and let's see what that mask looks like again. And now you can see I excluded a lot of those areas and there's still a little bit of space to kind of work around here. So we need to fill in this area. But I can get go directly over the shoe because I'm not worried about skin tones on the shoe. That is much better. We're excluding a lot more of the stuff that I wanted to get rid of. Um, just to get rid of this area by the sneaker. That's not affected by the texture drop. Guess we can get a little bit closer and more precise right around her knee. And the big one, I want to get rid of this drop in texture on her hair. So I'm going to erase it right off of her hair. Here, I'll drop it all the way down to negative 100 just so you can see the effect a little bit more clearly. But now we have much softer skin and really didn't take much work to make this type of adjustment. Now, that's not how far I really want to take it. I'm going to go to about minus 35, and there. I think that looks fantastic. Now, the other thing I noticed in this image is that her legs are actually darker than her upper body because of the way the flash that I added fell off. So, legs much darker, and I do want to also fix that, which needs to be a separate adjustment from the adjustment that included her upper body. So we're going to make another radial filter here. And I'm always trying to make it as small as I can while still including everything that I need to. All right, and again, we're going to go down here to range mask, color, we're going to sample these tones on our leg by drawing a box, clicking and holding the eyedropper, and then releasing once our box is to our liking. And we can check out that mask again by holding Alt. Oh, still need to invert. There we go. All right. Now, this is already pretty close to ideal. I'm going to drop the feather because there's no reason for me to be um, getting this effect anywhere outside the circle. So we're going to drop that feather. There we go. And I'm going to drop this basically until I start seeing some shadows develop, some darker spots develop on the mask right on our legs. So I'm still not seeing it. I'm still not seeing it right around here. Now we're starting to get some patches on our legs that um, would be excluded a little bit. So we don't want that. And then I'm also going to one more time go in with the brush, use the eraser, and we're just going to get rid of a majority of this stuff that we don't want included. It was already quite dark, so it wasn't going to get much of the effect, but because I'm going to be making a pretty dramatic exposure adjustment, I do want to get rid of as much of that as possible. So let's see how we're looking. That is pretty good. We'll just get a little closer right here. There we go. I'm happy with that. Now, if I increase the exposure, seeing how that's just applying to her legs, and we can brighten her legs. That's definitely too far, but we can brighten her legs until we get a similar exposure with her upper body. Now, this is a combination of being off in both color and exposure. So, because it received less of that flash lighting, her legs are a different color because they're taking on more of the hues and color properties of the ambient lighting. So, what I need to do here is add a little bit of green or drop the magenta. If you notice that her lower body is just more magenta than her upper body. So if we drop our tint a little bit, that allows us to drop our exposure a little bit as well. And right about there, it looks pretty good. Maybe it's still a hair too bright. I think it needs a little bit 
more green actually. There we go. That looks good. Just keep on pushing it until it kind of clicks in your brain that it looks accurate. And then I think you're good. And I, I do see a little bit of patchiness right here where maybe this adjustment didn't work perfectly. So I'm going to look at this again. And we're just going to go back in. Just make sure all of these tones right here are included 100% from these adjustments. So when you're making really gentle adjustments, you really don't have to be that precise with your brushing. Um, you can just use the radio filter, get a quick mask going, and then you're not going to have to do anything else. But the more you start pushing it, the more that you have to be really specific about how your mask looks in order for this function to work well. So I wouldn't try to use this for any like in-depth retouching. That is what Photoshop's for. But if you're just trying to like do a quick fix on a file, this can be a really great way. Okay, on to another application of the range mask that I absolutely love, which is headshots. So it's really powerful for headshots simply because you can make adjustments to a bulk amount of images. Now I shot these trying to get a pure white background and you can tell on the edges here it's a little bit darker than pure white which may look a little bit odd if these were put on any type of website. So we're going to take our graduated filter and we're going to increase the exposure and I'm going to drag it across here. Apparently that's not enough. There we go. We'll just blast it until we get it. We're going to do that on every edge. All right, cool. So now the edges of my image are completely white just from using a few quick graduated filters. Now I'm going to add another graduated filter. This time, what are we doing? We're going to do some skin softening again. Let's <laughs> just start with minus 100. I'm going to start over here and I'm just going to basically put it across the entire image. So it's affecting everything to the left. If I, if I click here and you see the mask, everything red is being affected, which is practically the entire image. All right, so we've got a negative 100 texture just so you guys can see the effect, but we're gonna come back down here to our range mask. We're gonna select a color, I'm gonna grab this. So for headshots, I like to go somewhere that is kind of a mix between midtones, shadows, maybe even a little highlight. So normally the nose or the forehead works really well. You do not want to select a massive area because then you're going to be selecting tones like, so there's probably some yellows in here that are going to bring in more of her hair. So we want to be, you know, we want to find a nice middle ground where we get the tones that we need to get rid of texture on the skin, but we're not, you know, just opening ourselves up to removing texture everywhere. Okay, so I'm just going to drop this down until I see most of these values. Like, I don't want any of these tones in her, in her shirt. But I'm not going to brush anything out yet. And the reason is I'm going to sync it. We're going to sync our graduated filters so that I get the white background effect as well as the skin texture reduction on our other images. Now, you can imagine I'm only doing this to one. But imagine if I had 100 here, then I'm really reducing some efforts that I'm going to be repeating across every image. And that's the power of Lightroom. So we're going to sync. And now this one is going to have all of our graduated adjustments. So right here, we'll just make sure that like our exposure graduated filter doesn't interrupt her hair at all. And this one, see, we can bring it in a little closer. This one, bring it in a little bit closer. And our skin one is still going to be affecting everything, but the one thing we need to redo here is find a new color sample. And man, like everybody I chose today, their skin color sample is the same as their hair. Okay, for this one, we're going to make a thin rectangle that goes from highlight to shadow across her forehead. All right, and then once we have that all selected, we can go back with our brush and we can just quickly remove it from our subject's hair so we're not getting any texture reduction on the hair and that stays nice and detailed. Now if you notice what I'm essentially doing here is instead of taking a brush that reduces texture and carefully going around her eyebrows and her eyelashes and her mouth and her nose and 
staying within the boundaries of her hair, like all of that would take a little bit longer. I'm just trying to get a starting point that captures all of my details and all of my fine movements in the mask. And then I can go and erase with any big movements such as removing the hair. That's really quick and easy. So we'll come back over here. We're gonna go into our graduated filter. I believe it's this one that is our skin, yes. We check our mask again, hair and her badge, all the details on her shirt. Both of those need to be adjusted, so we'll go in here. So we'll grab our brush, eraser, huge adjustments here, all of that. Quick adjustment on this hair right here, and quick adjustment on this hair, and all that texture is now back on her hair. All right, so there is a quick guide on using the range mask function. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you find this useful and it can be applied in so many different ways. So anything that you find that you are masking a lot, try out the radial filter, try out the graduated filter and using that in combination with the range mask and seeing if that doesn't speed up your workflow. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did. Subscribe if you want to see more. And until next time, keep on shooting.